Lisa? Lisa? Huh? Hi, uh, I, I was wondering if you wanted to go have dinner with us tonight. Um, thanks. I'm busy. Hey, isn't that Lisa Kirk? Yeah. Why is she going out with that creep? Carl? I don't know. I think he looks kind of cool. Ugh, gross. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about getting my ear pierced over my dead body. Just make sure the needle is sterilized. Terry! Hi. You played very well today. I think you're ready to try for first well in next semester. <gasps> that's, that's great, Professor Steinberg. I, I know I'm ready. Are you going to play it all this summer? Yeah, well, you know, I was thinking about trying out some rock and roll. <laughs> very interesting. See you next September. See ya. So, where are we going, Maestro? In the Empire Room? Oh, that sounds nice and boring. I'm really not hungry, Louise. I had a late lunch. I'm tired. Oh, I know, honey. I had no idea it would end this late. Uh, Terry, would you mind if we celebrate another time? <laughs> Mom, I'm leaving in the morning. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, um, it's okay. Maybe we can have my uh, going away party after I get back. Uh, good sport, kiddo. Besides, I bet you haven't even started packing. Okay, Caroline, you go up and get in your PJs, baby. Terry, would you take this upstairs for me and then come back, give me a hand, and you too, Carl? I'm polishing. Call me for Pete's sake. Better yet, Tom, just it's a good page. book. Send it in. They'll polish. That's what they have editors for. Yes, dear. Besides, we could use the rest of the advance. Louise, Professor Cameron here. Your turn. Congratulations. I read your paper, my dear. Why Children Go Punk will be the hot seminar of our conference. Robert Rehnquist called me personally to say how much he liked the topic. Oh, thank goodness. I want to review a few details. You have my number. Boy, do I ever. The man is driving me crazy. He is so nervous about this conference, you would think that his job was on the line instead of mine. Well, he's got a lot riding on it, too. What? He's already department head. Louise, this is the biggest conference your university's ever sponsored. If it's successful, it'll be a big feather in his cap. And yours. Well, right now, it's a real thorn in my side. Terry, the salad is in the fridge. I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, Dad. Yeah? You know, I, I was thinking about um, maybe, you know, changing my look for the summer. Oh? Well, yeah, you, you know, I don't know, just something different, you know? A little funkier, well, maybe. Well, how about school day, Daddy? Isn't it pretty? I was the only one who could spell Mississippi. Oh, honey. Carl, <laughs> come on. I'll be right there. That's great. Hey, Mom. You know, I, I was thinking, um, maybe getting a new haircut. Oh, new haircut to go with your new contact lenses? Well, that sounds good. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, in case I get into a band. Hey, I mean, listen up, everybody. Like, Here's my speech for the Young Men's Republican Club next week. Give me a listen, tell me what you think. Good morning, friends. Oh, boy. Haven't seen this thing in a long time. Yeah, but, you know, I figured I'd have a better shot at getting into a band with a guitar rather than a violin. Yeah, you're probably right. I'll, I'll be ju just a second, okay? Well, I go in with you, kiddo, but, you know. Yeah, no, uh, it's okay, Dad. Okay, call and tell us you got there, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay.
help you, young man? Yeah, hi. I'm Terry Warner, the new children's counselor. Um, I'm supposed to see Mr. Smiley. Oh, really? Well, I can't wait to tell him. Have a seat. Thanks. <laughs> Terry Warner's here. Oh, good. Show him in. What did his mother tell you about him? Oh, I don't know. Not much. Nice kid, quiet, plays classical violin. Oh, really? Well, a Ziggy Ziggy Sputnik lookalike is sitting outside in the lobby waiting for us to hire him as our daycare counselor. What are you talking about? Who's Ziggy Ziggy? What's it? Show water in here. Max, we cannot hire this kid to be in charge of our guest children. It'll be a disaster. What's the matter with you? His mother's school is sending us the biggest conference we've had all year. Hi, Terry. Welcome to... Hello, Mr. Smiley. I'm pleased to meet you. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot about the moose. No, that's okay. Uh, this is Phyllis Brooks, hotel manager. Hi. Uh, we met. Well, Terry, uh, why don't you check in and uh, go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning? Great, great. Thank, thank you, sir. Max, we cannot put a punker in charge of our nursery. The guests will be up in arms. He seems like a nice enough kid. Phil, we cannot afford to risk losing this conference. It's been a slow year. I'll tell you what, we'll give him a try. If it doesn't work out, we have a legitimate reason to fire him. I can't understand why his mother never said anything about his looks. Well, I can. Hey, hey, kids, take it easy. Miss Brooks. Yes? That can't be the new counselor you promised us. I'm afraid it is. Oh, no need to be concerned, Mr. Green, Mrs. Rose, Mrs. Saunders. Uh, he's a classical violinist, the son of a college oh. professor. And uh, he has the highest references. No, he looks dangerous. I assure you, Mr. Green, he isn't. Dr. Warner, I'll book seven additional suites for your group. Thank you, and we may need more. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, now remember, Smiley, I want the best of everything. This conference is very important. The chairman of our board is our keynote speaker. Don't worry, Professor Cameron. Conferences are our business. Everything will be fine, I promise you. Mr. Smiley, what were you saying about Terry? Is there some problem? Oh, no, no, it's just he he wasn't exactly what we expected. Well, I told you, he hasn't had that much experience. Well, no, he's doing fine. In fact, why don't you talk to him yourself? Would you transfer this call to Terry Warner's room? Thank you. 
Hello. Hi, honey. Hi, mom. How you doing? Oh, terrific. Sure. Yeah, no, no, really. Um, hey, thanks for the twenty. You're welcome, honey. Uh, do you need any more? Um, no, no, I'm doing great. Hey, um, guess what? I I got a weekend job with a local band. Well, that's <laughs> wonderful. Um, look, I have to go, but we'll call you on Sunday. You can talk to the whole family. Um, yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Stop rain, and we don't have screaming brats tearing through the halls. Okay. Gotta give this kid credit. I know, but he, he makes me so uncomfortable, Max. He's getting weirder looking every day. You know, I just don't understand why he's doing it. Oh, me either, but if his parents can put up with him for the whole year, I guess we can take him for one summer. I suppose. Besides, it's only a few more days to the conference. Adam? Oh, Louise, good. You've got the posters. Yeah. Uh, here are the photos Smiley sent me of their suites. Oh, they look good, don't they? Oh, I don't trust them. A good 35 millimeter camera lens can make any two by four room look like the Taj Mahal. Adam, the Espinor Hotel depends on repeat business. I don't think they do that. Come on, Louise. Don't be naive. Now, I want you to go up there ahead of time. Remember. We want zero defects on this mission. Aye, aye, sir. Now, let's see those posters. You know, Louise, the success of your seminar determines the board's vote on your full professorship. I know that. Where's the counselor? Oh, that's me. <laughs> Can I help you? You? That's impossible. No respectable hotel would hire someone like you to take care of children. It's outrageous. I'm calling the manager. Hey, Terry, uh, what's the commotion? What's going on? Mr. Smiley, well, this lady's come in. She's a little upset. What's going on is that the nitwits who run this hotel have hired this, this delinquent to take care of children. But I've just called the manager, and she's on her way. Well, I can tell you, madam, that I am the owner of this hotel, and that Terry here is no delinquent. In fact, he's worked here all summer, and we've not had one complaint. So if you don't mind, I'll ask you to leave the nursery so that Terry can get started with his day. I was told this hotel had some class. Obviously, I was mistaken. Uh, I'm Phyllis Brooks, the manager. Can I help? I thought I could prevail upon you to hire a proper counselor. Apparently, I cannot. Who is that man? Mrs. Rehnquist. Robert Rehnquist's wife? Hmm. Um, hey, look, I'm sorry, Mr. Smiley. Hey, thanks for sticking up for me. If you're really sorry, Terry, scrub your face, wash that guck out of your hair, and try looking like a normal human being. <laughs> I look like a human being. <laughs> Oh, this hotel is gorgeous. I'm so glad Cameron suggested we came a few days early. It's like a real vacation. Mm. Mm. I think the nursery's right down here. Terry will be so surprised. Terry? Mom, Dad. I wasn't expecting you until Monday. What are you doing? You shouldn't play dress up with the children like this, Terry. It's not a good role model. Yeah, a clown makeup would be more appropriate. This is a. This is my new image. What? Well, this is the way I dress now. It's my new look. Well, what was wrong with the old one? Didn't go with my new music. Your music is different, too. You got any more surprises? Well, Dad, what I told you I was playing with a rock band. I thought you said pop band. It's the same difference. Um, look, I gotta get back to work now. All right, we'll uh, discuss this at lunch. I can't. Um, we're taking the kids to the museum for the day. Uh, dinner, then. 
Usually it was the guys at the club. Look, maybe you'll understand this better if you come out and see our show. We're playing at the alley on Main Street. I'll reserve a table for you. All right. We'll talk afterwards. Okay. Say. do this to us relax without the earring and the makeup he won't look that bad and what do we do with his hair get him a wig not a bad idea tom this is nothing to joke about my job is on the line cameron is going to blow a gasket when he sees terry and i will be the laughing stock of the conference All right, louise please relax okay hmm? terry come in good uh we we were just uh, talking about you so, um, how'd you like the show? Well, it's not our kind of music, but uh, obviously you're having some success with it. Oh, yeah, Daddy, the best. Honey, it's pure, unadulterated noise. Now, how can you stand that stuff after playing Mozart and Puccini? Louise, Terry, why are you doing this? Well, it's, it's cool, Dad. You know, it works for me. Well, it doesn't work for me. Well, it doesn't have to, Mom. Really? Oh. Well, you don't happen to be in the world all by yourself, Terry. You do have a family to consider. I thought you always said different was okay. Oh, I knew you'd throw that one up to me someday. It's like last year. You dyed your hair from brown to yellow. I don't remember a family conference about it. Nobody had a fit either. Terry, that's hardly the same thing. Exactly. There was no shock value in what I did with my hair. Don't you know what Professor Cameron is going to say when he sees you? Yeah, the guys were right. You know, all you care about is what other people think. You don't care about me. You never did. What? Oh, it's son, you know that's not true. All right, all right, all right. We're all a little overtired and overwrought by today's surprises. Let's sleep on it and get together in the morning. I gotta go to work at eight. All right, lunch. Fine with me. Oh, I'll see you about it. Sweetheart, How can you be so calm about this? Louise, I'm not being calm. I'm just trying to understand what's going on here. We've obviously failed him somehow. Well, don't start that, okay? I'm the psychologist. Terry is the best adjusted of the three kids. Not anymore. <laughs> Very funny. Look, it's a phase. You said so yourself. He'll grow out of it. Before the conference? That's not very likely. Well, we'll just have to send him home. We can't do that. He's got a job. Remember what we taught him about being responsible? But we can't be seen with him during the conference. We'll have to pretend we don't know him. Louise, you can't really mean that. Besides, it'll never work. Well, have you got a better idea? Yes, Louise, I'll tell you what I tell my clients. The best way to handle a crisis is to face it head on. Listen, it stopped raining, so why don't you bring the kids outside for a change? Um, yeah, I am. Going down to the corral. Oh, uh, hey. Uh, I thought that was just for theater days and the makeup. Yeah, well, it was, but I decided I like it. Why? It makes me look cool. Makes you look awful. Listen. You're a nice kid. Why do you make it so hard for people to see that? See, you don't understand, Mr. Smiley. I mean, it's like... 
looking like this, people pay attention before nobody even knew I was alive. There's got to be an easier way. You're Terry Warner, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Could you get us into the alley Friday night? We called, but they said it was all full. Um, yeah, sure. Just come to the door and ask for me. Great. Thanks. OK. <laughs> Bye. See you later. All right, OK, but you can't hide behind this mask for the rest of your life. I mean, you got to let people see the real you sometime. Well, this is the real me. Just change the wrapping. See you later. OK, ride some horses today, huh? Here we go. I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Rehnquist. I just can't let Amy ride. It's too dangerous. But surely you have one horse that's gentle enough for her to ride. We could strap her on. Well, strapping on is a bad idea. Besides, our insurance company won't allow it, ma'am. Well, well, maybe, maybe in a little while, when they all go to lunch, I'll take her around a couple times myself. Thank you so much. We'll just wait over there. OK. Come on, sweetheart. Hi. I'm Terry. Do you remember me? You know, there's some special places in the city where the horses know how to handle people who can't use their legs. You could learn to ride real well. I'm sure your mom here will take you. Of course. As soon as we get back home, we'll look into it. Thank you, young man. I don't want to go to a special place. I want to go here with the other kids. I don't want special things in special places. I want to be like everybody else. You know, that's funny what you said about wanting to be like everybody else. Because I think being like everybody else is really boring. I mean, look at me now. I've gone to a lot of trouble not to look like everyone else. And I love it. I mean, you know, even though a few people like your mom here think I'm a little wacko. Do you like the way I look? You mean it really with the red hair, the makeup, everything? You think adding a little bit of green would be too much there? No. I think you're beautiful. I think you're beautiful, too. I'll tell you what. You wait here with your mommy, and I'll be back in a little while, OK? OK. So are you pleased with the attendance at the conference? Very. I think we'll have close to 300 people from all over the world. Well, it sounds like your seminar is a sellout. And you've certainly been getting a lot of press coverage with your topic. Uh, do you have any children? No. Uh, I mean, yes, three, three. And your husband's a uh, crisis management consultant. Have you ever used any of his techniques? Not yet. Hey, Mom. As Joe hit the water, another geyser of spray whirled to find himself face to face with another gorilla. Guess what I got in here? See? You're so special, they even made adults just like you. I'm sorry about the way I carried on the other day, but your appearance really frightened me. <laughs> Look, it's OK. Sometimes it frightens me, too. Well, what do you think? Should we go horseback riding? Come on. Ah. Terry, I don't understand. I knew you'd be surprised. I just didn't think you'd be ashamed of me. Well, what did you think we would be? Proud? Did you see the expression on the reporter's face when you said, Hi, Mom. Louise. Don't you Louise me unless you can tell me how to explain to 300 psychiatrists and psychologists why our son is running around looking like a freak while I'm giving a seminar on the punk syndrome and how parents can avoid it. And you, why now? Why here, huh? You know how important this conference is to me, to my job. I didn't think of that. That's right. You didn't think about anyone but yourself. No, no, I didn't think it mattered much what I did. I mean, you guys never paid much attention to me anyway. What are you talking about? 
What, what am I talking about? Dad, do you realize that this is the first time that either of you have spent any time alone with me? Or, or really cared about anything that I did since I was little? Terry, how can you say that? Yes, Carl, there's always time for Carl, there's always time for Carolyn. Nobody ever listens to me. You know, I even tried to tell you what I was gonna do, but you just didn't care. We do care very much. Son, I had no idea you felt like that. I gotta get back to work now. All right, but we'll continue this later. I'm glad you brought this up, Terry. I wish you had before. Terry. Baby, we do love you very much. And I'm sorry if we haven't made that clear. me for a loop. I have no idea. Uh, but I should have figured it out. It's a typical middle child syndrome. Poor baby. Yeah, he wanted to get our attention. He's probably as uncomfortable with the way he looks as we are. Well, I'm glad we worked that out. I bet he'll wash his face by the time we're ready to go home on Sunday. Too bad his hair will take a while to grow out. And it sure takes a lot of guts to face a room full of psychiatrists and psychologists and talk about how parents can avoid the punk syndrome in their teenagers when your own son looks like this. Hey, Mom. <laughs> She'll obviously be speaking from personal experience. Good luck, Dr. Warner. And now back to the studio with Charlene and the weather. What do I do now? Use it. Why is everybody getting so excited? Oh, come on. Your appearance is outrageous. I'd never allow a child of mine to go around looking like that. All right, everyone, settle down. Quiet, please. You told Terry that your parents threw you out. That's right. I didn't take any drugs or nothing. Still didn't matter. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Yeah, well, believe it. When I came home wearing an earring, my father told me to get out and never come back again. So I left. And how old are you, Hank? I'm 21. And you, Dilly? 14. 14. Yeah, my dad would have been a lot happier if I would have been a junkie. At least he could have hid that from the neighbors. That's all they care about. Appearances. It's about other people. It's not about you. Have you ever tried looking at it from your parents' point of view? Why should we? They never see anything from our point of view. But aren't you all going around looking like that just to get a rise out of the rest of us? No, oh, we're doing it because we like it. And it's nobody else's business but our own how we want to look. I mean, that's true. It's like everyone always tells you don't judge a book by its cover. So why doesn't that go for us, too? Yeah, and all you guys went around looking weird and passing out flowers. <laughs> Hardly the same thing, young man. We preached love and peace. Well, you all stand for cruelty and violence. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait a second. That's not true. Yeah, okay, maybe some punkers are violent, but so are some bankers and truck drivers. Yeah, it doesn't go for all of us. Why doesn't somebody take the trouble to find out and quit lumping us all together? Maybe it's because we're afraid of you. I think that's very true, Dr. Warner. I know I was terrified of the thought of, of Terry taking care of our child, but, but then something happened which forced me to get to know him. And I'm very glad. I think he's a pretty terrific kid. I think so, too. Now, I would like to thank everyone, especially our participants, for joining us today. I had originally hoped to show parents how to keep their kids from turning punk. What I learned is that it's more important to find out why they're doing it. It's a brilliant panel, Louise. Have you seen today's papers? They love Terry and his friends. We're the toast of the trade press. Great. Oh, Dr. Warner, <laughs> I, I just wanted to show you a photograph of my son, Matthew, when he was 19. That's about three years ago. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the same young man. He's now 22 and a banker. Oh, that's well. Hey, congratulations. Well, some kids never change, but uh, I just wanted to assure you there's always hope. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
But I'm sure that by next week, Terry will be back playing the violin with his school orchestra. Well, I hope so. By the way, congratulations on an excellent seminar. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, thank you for all your help, my dear. We couldn't have done it without you. Rehnquist is ecstatic. By next month, you'll be a full professor. Nice to see you, Tom. Oh, thanks, Adam. Oh, that's great. Dr. Warner, I want to thank you for the most successful conference of our whole summer season. And although I never thought I'd say this, for one of the best counselors we've ever had. You know your son's really wonderful with children. Oh, yes, he's welcome here anytime. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Uh, maybe next time we can get a photo of him in advance so we know what to expect. <laughs> Well, I don't think that'll be necessary. We had a long talk with Terry after the panel, and I think we've worked it all out. In fact, we think he's upstairs washing that junk out of his hair right now. Really? Mom, Dad, I'm sorry I'm late. I was just down saying goodbye to the band. But um, I'm ready to go, and you are. You don't intend to drive home in that getup, do you? Dad, look, I thought we had this out last night. This is the way I'm going to dress now. See you later. They will never let you into school like that, Terry. Mom, come on, take a look around. They're happy we show up at all. Ugh, perfectly gross. Stop that, Caroline. You know, I don't think I can hold my food down if I have to look at that every morning. That's enough now. No, really, Dad. Hey, it's okay. I mean, before, nobody even knew I was at the breakfast table. Oh, for the love of... This place has become like a war zone. Now, what's wrong with him? He's just trying to get our attention. He's got it. He told us that we treat him like he's invisible around here. That we don't listen to him, that we don't care. I think he's right. We don't pay any attention to Terry. He's always been just kind of there. Ah, Mr. Warner, I see you've acquired a new look over the summer. How do you like it? If you were a peacock, all the hens would probably be running after you. So I'll take this as a compliment. You'll be playing first viola, you'll be playing first cello this semester. Um, Prof Professor Steinberg, you didn't assign me a position today. I know that. Well, why not? Are you by any chance planning to change the way you look in the near future? No. Then you can't be a member of this orchestra. But, but you said I could play first violin this year. Not in this getup. Well, why not? Oh, it's an interesting look. But an orchestra is a team, and you're a distraction. Yes, but uh, years ago, man, they played in white wigs and white stockings. But today, we are playing in dark suits and short hair. And may I add, only the women wear makeup. Hey, you're not being fair. Terry, you're a bright boy. You know we can't have an audience distracted by a bizarre-looking young musician when they should be concentrating on the wondrous strains of a Bach cantata. Don't look so glum, my friend. The choice is up to you. If you choose to come back, all it will take is a bar of soap for your face and a half a haircut. Or else you can invite me to one of your gigs. I'm sure you're terrific. Well, you know, we're a lot more tolerant in our music scene. I mean, I, I could be up there playing with a tuxedo and regular hair. Nobody's going to tell me I didn't fit in. Who are you kidding? You'd probably accessorize with army boots, and your tux would be two sizes too big. <laughs> probably true. Terry, good luck, whatever you decide to do. Hey, Professor. Thank you. He's not going to let you play, is he? It's not fair. I mean, you ought to be able to project any image that you want to to the world. You know, I think he's the first person that's telling me I really can. But I can't expect to have it all. I'm gonna 
make some choices. talk this morning after you left, and, uh... <sighs> Terry, you're right. We haven't been paying much attention to you. But it wasn't intentional, and it's not gonna happen anymore. Really? Yeah, really. <sighs> and, you know, you haven't helped. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you always gave in to what we wanted. You never took a stand for yourself. You might be right. And we do care. We're just not mind readers. So if you had said something a little sooner, maybe you wouldn't have to go to such drastic extremes. Carl, it wasn't such drastic extremes. I mean, all I did was I changed my hair and I changed my music, you know, my look. It's not like I really flipped out on everybody. That's debatable. Have you looked in the mirror lately? <sighs> all right, look, I'm sorry. We just want you to know that we're sorry if we made you feel bad. Terry, you're my brother, and I love you. Colored hair and all. Come here. If he goes back to classical violin, he can he can I go don't to think school. He wants to play the violin. I think that's what well, this is all about. He'll be a lot more young. famous or richer if he stays with rock. Well, not everything can be measured in dollars and cents. Until he finishes it. college, it doesn't matter anyway. Oh, it classical does violin is not just matter. First, he's got to finish college. Hold it. It's nice that you're all interested in what I should be doing, but I think I was better off before when nobody paid attention to me. What do you mean by that? What's supposed to mean? I'm just kidding. I love that you all care, but it's my life, and I've got to make my own choices. We're just trying to give you the benefit of our input. I know, I know that, Dad, and, and I do. I appreciate it. But I've done a lot of thinking, and I know that I have to make my decisions not because I want to please you or, or because I want your attention, but because they're right for me. So for now, I'm going to stick to playing rock. Hooray. Oh. I hope that's okay with you. Uh, you know, Professor Steinberg, he says I can come back and join the orchestra anytime I want. And I figure it'll be a lot easier to pick up the violin later than to try to be a rock star at age 50. Well, I don't know if I can listen to that music for another 30 years, but if it makes you happy. Okay. I love you, sweetheart, and I will try to get used to it. And I'll make it a little easier, too. I've decided to cut out the makeup. I don't need it. Good. Then maybe you'll realize that your natural hair color is more attractive. And a regular haircut would be Dad, much better. Dad, don't push your luck. That's right, Tom. At least it's a start. <laughs> 